مرحبا اهلا وسهلا اوكي وي ار جوين تو وي ار جوين تو وي ار جوينت وي ار جوينت تو دو ذا لاست لتر ذا از هير ان يونت 7 سو اف يو جات يور تكست بوك جو اهيد ان اوبن اب اف تحب كتاب بيج 156 بيج 156 سو از يو اردي نو وي كفرد فا قاف and kaf and we said that fa looks like this and if you want you could when you're writing initial medial and final you could do it like this right this is initially this is medially and this is finally and qaf is very similar right in the initial and medial position it looks the same in final position قاف dips below the line and then قاف is you know a little bit different so remember that shape that we have that reminds us that it looks like this and like this and like this and of course in initial position you can also write it like that okay and then we talked about the difference between these two letters remember we said قاف is a heavy letter it's in the back of our throat and قاف is at the roof of our mouth which is just the same as the English K okay So now we're going to move on. We're going to do the last letter that's here. So I'm going to draw a line right here. And that is the letter LAM. LAM. You're going to write it a few times for yourself. LAM. And as you would expect, LAM makes the L sound, right? The L sound. LA. Very simple. LAM. Okay. Now, we're going to just go ahead and jump right in because there's a lot of things with the letter LAM that we're now going to be able to do, which is exciting. So we want to talk about what it looks like initially, medially, and finally. In initial position, LAM looks like a straight line and it's connected. So what does that look similar to? This is an ALIF, which is also a straight line. What is the difference between an ALIF and a LAM? They're both straight lines. Alif is right or die. It does not connect to the next letter. Lam, however, does connect to the next letter. All right? So if you had Lam followed by a Ya, we would look like this. Li. All right? So Lam connects. It's a letter that is a straight line, so it has the same length as the Alif does in terms of how it's vertical shape. Right? But it connects to the next letter. So let's write a couple of words. Let's do, we'll look at the top of page 157. Libya. Libya. The name of the country, Libya. Libya. And of course, as always, you can pause and unpause when you're ready. Lam, followed by a ya, because it's making the e sound. Li, bi, ya, followed by a ya with an alif. Libya. And this is a palindrome, right? Because it reads the same forward as it does backwards. Similar to the word mom, right? It reads the same forward and backwards. In English, race car reads the same forward as it does backwards. Fun little fact. So it's a, just a palindrome. But this is Libya, the country in North Africa. Okay, let's do another one. Talib. Talib. طالب طالب starts with a heavy T sound طا followed by an ألف طا ألف does not connect to the next letter so لام is going to be initial ل كسرة با طالب طالب means student how would I make this feminine this is masculine how would I make it feminine what would I add to it to make it feminine Connect dot marbuta. But connects, so we're going to open it to medial position and then connect it. Talib. Okay. We can bring this closer there. Talib, okay. taliba, student. Okay. So if you want to say, I'm a student, Anna, talib, Anna, taliba, Anna, talib, Anna, taliba, student. How would I say, my brother is a student? أخي طالب أخي طالب What about new student? 
New student. Remember, student comes first. The adjective new comes afterwards. Talib jadid. Talib jadid. Okay. So we have lam initially. Lam in medial position looks like this. It's that straight line, but now it's connected on both sides. Okay. So it's connected on both sides. And in final position, it's going to take its full form, as most letters do. Okay, okay so let's look at lam in medial position. Let's do the word halib. Halib. Ha. Li. B. Ha. Fatha. Lam. Ya. Ba. Halib. Meaning milk. Halib. Okay, let's do another one. Kalb. 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 Kaf. Good. So you have kaf initial position with the fatha. Lam with the sukun. Ba. Kalb means dog. Okay. I'm going to give you another word. Oops, the arrow was in the way. Same spelling but has a heavy letter instead. Qalb. Qalb. Qalba. Qalb. It's a heavy letter, so we have lam ba. Qalb, which means heart. So notice the difference between kalb with the kaf and qalb with the qa, right? Different meaning. And qalb from comes from a verb qalb, which means to flip, because hearts flip-flop. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad. We have all these range of emotions, and they're constantly changing. So that's where that comes from. Okay. Okay. Now, one thing we want to talk about. Let's see what I want to do this first. I'll do final position first, and then I'll come back to that. So let's look at lam in final position, which looks like this. So let's do fasl, 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 fa, do you hear fas or fas, us, ah, oh, there's a heavy sound, slide, lam, fasl, fasl means, it can mean the same thing as saf, so it can mean class, but it can also mean season. Okay, like winter, spring. Okay. And fasl can also be used in a different context um, when you're talking like a semester. Fasl al-dirasi, a semester in school. So it's just a period of time. Okay. okay. So now that we have the lam, we have a very important thing to learn. And that is, put it here in green, two things. One, when you have an alif followed by a lam, like this. This right here is called al, the definite article. And the definite article makes a word definite. We pronounce it al. Okay? Now, originally, the definite article was an alif hamza, like this, and then it was a lam with a sukun. But because we use the definite article so often, you actually don't have to write any of those, and we simply write it like this, without any marking. So don't write any marks on it. An al usually has the meaning of the. Okay, Not always, and I'll show you examples. But usually has the meaning of the, the way that we use the in English. Okay, It makes the word definite. So I'll give you an example. If we have a word like, I'll give you a word. Kitab. Write the word kitab. It's a good word to have. Kaf with a kasra. Ta with an alif. Ba. Kitab. Kitab means book. And all of the words that I've given you so far, they have the meaning 
of a something. That's what they usually mean. A book. If I say sayara, a car, jar, a neighbor. Okay, that's usually what it means. It has it implies that meaning of a because we don't have the word a in Arabic the way that we do in English. So it kind of implies that meaning. Now when you add the definite article to the beginning of a word, it changes the meaning. So if we take the same word and we add an alif lam to the beginning of that word. Al. Al kitab. So if you write it out, you would write it out like this. Al kitab. Now it means the book. So this al attached to the beginning of that noun makes it the. Al kitab. And the definite article can only be used on nouns and adjectives, similar to the Tatmur Bhutha we said were only for nouns and adjectives. The definite article is the same thing. So it's only for nouns and adjectives. You'll never see the definite article on a verb or on a preposition. Okay? So, al. So, any word that you have. So, we did fasl, meaning class or season. So, how would I say the class or the season? Simply with. Alif Lam, Al Fasl. I'm going to write it like this, Al Fasl. So you don't have to write any harakat, any markings, or anything on the Alif Lam because it will be pronounced Al. Okay. Now, one thing that we need to know in terms of how to write this if you have Alif Lam and it's followed by this shape, the Jim Ha Kha shape. Jim ha kha in medial position looks like this. Remember? We would have like, for instance, if you had a ba and you had the letter like in bakht, right? We wrote it like this. So it has that shape. If you have alif lam and it's followed by this shape, what you're going to do is you're going to write it like this. You're going to write the lam about two-thirds of the way. And then you're going to write that triangle shape right underneath it like this. Now, if you were to write it like this, you're not going to be marked off, but this is when people are handwriting, that's usually how it's written. Okay. So we did halib for milk. So I want you to write the milk. Al-halib. Al-halib. So we're going to write like this, two-thirds of the way. Al-halib. How about the neighbor? How would we say the neighbor? Al Jar. If it was feminine, Al Jar. This is extremely useful because up until now, all of the sentences that we have been doing that start with a noun, all of them have been mine. My neighbor, my dad, my brother, my sister, my my teacher. My, my, my. Everything is my. Now we can actually start sentences with the. Okay? The neighbor. The book. The car. The so-and-so. The cat. Okay? So you can start all sorts of words now with alif lam. So if I wanted to say the neighbor is something. So for instance, if I want to say the neighbor is weird and it's feminine Al-jara gariba. The neighbor is weird. So you have your noun and then you have your adjective. And notice they both have that more okay. Let's do another one. We've done good morning. How do we say good morning? Sabah al-khair. Let's do that one. Sabah al-khair. Two words. Sabah al-khair. Sabah al-khair. You're going to write it down. Sabah al khayr. Sabah al khayr. We have the A sound, so fatha and ya. Sabah al khayr. Sabah al khayr. Good morning. Sabah al-khair, 
صباح الخير صباح النور Okay, how would we say the door? The door. What's the word for door? Bab. So if I take alif lam, and then I write the word bab. So alif lam al is always connected to the word. Now ba is connected because the letter lam connects. Al bab. So here we have bab by itself. Oops. And here we have al bab. Okay, the door. So you're going to complete the sentence. You're going to say the door is black. The door is black unless doing the house is white. That's what my house looks like. The door is black and the house is white. So go ahead, write that down and then come back. Al bab, then we use the color, aswad. Wa for and. Al bayt. The house, so we're going to put alif lam in front of the word bait. So here is bait, right? So when you put alif lam, now the ba is in medial position. Well, bait, so we have al bait, white, abyel. Remember, we did that, abyel. So now what you can do is you can take any of those words that you have and you can make them definite. Okay? Now, these right here are examples of complete sentences. Al-bab aswad, the door is black. It has the meaning implied of is, and al-bayt abiyad, the house is white. It has that meaning implied. Now, when you want to do a noun adjective phrase, excuse me, when you want to do a noun adjective phrase, And remember, that's a phrase, right? A big house, a small cat, a weird neighbor. Those are phrases. They're not complete sentences. In a noun adjective phrase, we said before that the noun and the adjective have to match in gender. Okay? Now we're going to add to that that they also have to match in definiteness. Match in definiteness. That was spelled definiteness. You get the point. And they're also going to match a number, but we haven't done plurals yet, so we don't have to worry about that. So that means this. If I wanted to say new house, new house, we would say bait. Jadid. Right? That implies a, a new house. That's what that implies. If I want to say the new house, the new house, then I have to put the word alif lam, al bayt, and because that noun has alif lam, its adjective also has to have alif lam. It has to match. In order for it to be a phrase, it has to match. So we're going to say al bayt al jadid. And now this means the new house. So if you have the in front of a noun adjective phrase, then both the noun, the house, right, and new both have to take the adjective. Okay? If they both do not have the adjective, so like in this example here, where the first word al-bab had alif lam, and the adjective here did not, then it implies the meaning of is or are or am. It implies the being verb. That's how you tell the difference, because we don't have the word a uh in Arabic, we don't have the being verb, we don't use it the same way as in English. But that's how you, within the grammar, you can tell the difference between those type of structures, whether it's a phrase or a sentence. Okay? So if we had said al bayt and then just jadid by itself, then that would mean the house is new. Because al bayt has alif lam and jadid does not. Okay? 
Now let's do the same exact thing. Let's look at something that's feminine. So we see that there's matching in, in gender and there's matching in definiteness. In this case, you've got both of them, right? Because Beit is masculine. So Jadid doesn't take a thought Mabut that's also masculine. Okay. So let's do another one. Let's use the word Qadiba. We'll stick with, we'll stick with new. That's fine. So a new female student, make it feminine. So student goes first, because it's a phrase. So we have faliba. There's no word for a, it's just implied. Then we use the adjective, which is jadid. And because faliba is feminine, we're going to make jadida. Feminine. Remember here, dal doesn't connect, that's why we're not connecting those two. Qaliba, okay. jadida. If I wanted to make it the new student, qaliba, we're going to add alif lam to the beginning. Al jadida. Okay, so now this would be the new student. So that's just the difference between your noun adjective phrase versus a complete sentence. So now that you know your noun adjective phrases, not only do they match in gender, but they also match in definiteness. So if the first word of the noun has alif lam, then the adjective also has to have alif lam. Now, if you want to use, this is pushing it just a little bit further. So let's see if you can understand this next concept. This is a concept that we'll go way into depth in the next class. Okay, so once we start the next textbook and we move on to 131, we'll go much more into depth with these structures. But I just want to introduce it to you. Since we're here, we might as well, right? So you can take this word here and look at them and say, okay, they're both definite because they have edit them. Okay. But you can also look at a word like neighbor, for instance. If I say jar by itself, it implies a neighbor. And if I say al jar, it means the neighbor. That's definite. Another way that you can make a word definite, not using the word the, is what we've done, is by saying jari, which is my neighbor. Definite in that it's a specific person that you're talking about. It's not just a neighbor, but it's my neighbor. It's specific. So if I wanted to say my new neighbor, my new neighbor, the word new is an adjective. So in English, even though it's in the middle, in Arabic, it's going to go to the end of the sentence, or the end of that phrase. It's a phrase. And neighbor will go first. Okay? And it's my neighbor that I'm talking about that happens to be new, my new neighbor. So we're going to use the word jari, like this. And because jari is a definite word in that it's mine, it's not a new neighbor, it's my new neighbor, we're going to put el on the word jadid. Jari al jadid. If it was feminine, we would say jarati al jadida. My new neighbor, my female, my new female neighbor. Okay. Now I'm not going to put this on a test or anything. I'm just throwing this out there because you know there's always curious minds who might want to know how to say these things. So we'll talk a lot more about this in the next class. Okay. So for now, just focus on alif lam generally meaning the. Right? And then for noun adjective phrases, <coughs> the noun has an alif lam, the adjective will also take an alif lam. The last thing that I want to cover when it comes to the lam, we said that if you have an alif plus a lam, it equals al, and it usually means the. If you have the opposite, if you have an alam followed by an alif, how would you write that? La. If I want to write la, 
Why would I write that? Well, we would say, okay, well, this is lam initial position, and then alif goes up. That's actually incorrect. So the way that you're going to write it, if you have lam alif, we call it lam alif. So if you look on page one, what page are we on? 159 at the top of the page, it says lam alif. If you have a lam followed by an alif, it will actually look like this. You will put the lam like this on the line, and then we'll put the alif diagonally inside. Like this. So you're going to write that a few times. Okay. This way of writing, there's two ways. This is the first way. This way of writing lam alif can connect. So if you have lam alif in the middle of the word, it'll look like this, where you have some letter is connected to it right there. Okay. And then you have the following letter. Like, for instance, Bilal, the name Bilal. Bilal starts with a ba with a gastra, not B, but B, Bilal. And then I have a lam followed by an alif. So don't write it like that. You're going to write it like this and put the lam there with the alif inside. Now you have a lam followed by an alif. So the second letter, or the third letter in this word, is an alif. Alif doesn't connect to the next letter, so that last letter lam, you'll write it full position, okay, in its full form. Bilal, like this. So this form of writing lam alif can be in the middle of a word and it connects. Lam alif by itself is also a word. So just by itself, lam alif means no. So if you want to say yes, it's na'am. But if you say no, la. And it's also a negative word. It makes verbs negative. So it negates, let's see here, it negates present tense verbs. Negates present tense verbs. Okay? So let's look at an example. If I say, if I say, أحبو, أحبو, أحبو الفصل, الفصل. I like the class. I like the class. If I want to say, I don't like the class, so I've got a present tense verb and I want to negate it. La. You just put the word la in front of it. La أحبو. If I say, I don't want, I don't want tea. La urid shai. La urid shai. I don't want tea. La, then the verb, I want. So, la urid. So, I'm putting don't in front of there. I don't want. La urid shai. I don't want tea. La atazawaj. I'm not going to get married. Okay. La. So when you put it in front of a present tense verb, it simply makes it negative. The other way of writing lam alif is like this. It's just a crisscross, okay, like this. But what's important to know about this version of writing lam alif is it cannot connect. So this one doesn't connect, whereas this one does connect. That's the difference. So if you wanted, you could write, oops, if you wanted, you could write it because you don't have to connect it to anything when it's a word by itself. You could write like this, la urid shai. You could write it either way because it's not connected, so it doesn't matter which one you write. But if you're writing it inside of a word, so if the spelling of the word has a lam and it's followed by an alif in the spelling of the word, and the word is connected, then write it in the connected way. So let's do a couple of examples. Okay, let's look at the word kilab. We did the word kalb, which was dog. We're gonna make it plural. So dog, we're gonna do dogs. Kilab, kilab. Go ahead, write the word kilab. Kilab. Kaf has kasra. Then what do you have? Ki. It's not ki lab, it's kilab. The a is after the lam. Lam alif. Kilab. The a sound, right? So you have lam followed by an alif. 
So what we're going to do, because it's connected, we're going to write it in this way. Because that's the only way that you can connect it. Kaf, kasra, lam, alif. Alif doesn't connect. Akhir, harf, ulba. Kilab, meaning dogs. Okay. okay, let's look at another example. We did talib, which was student. We're going to make it plural. Tullab. 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 You start here with a ta and it has a dhamma. Tullab. What's happening on the lam? How many times am I pronouncing it? Tullab. I'm stopping on it first and then I'm pronouncing it a second time. So it's being pronounced twice. So it's a lam with a shadda. And because the thought connects, we have to write the lam in the connected way and put the alif diagonally in it because make the ah sound. And then alif doesn't connect. Okay. okay, let's do another one. Walad. Here's a new word. Wa la. The walad. Walad means boy or child. Okay. Let's make it plural. Aulad. Aulad. Aw. What makes the ah sound in the beginning of the word? Alif Hamza. Fatha. Aw. Wow with the sukun. Remember, alif doesn't connect, so the wow is not going to connect. Now we have. Aw after the lam, lad, lam alif, la d with a d at the end, dal. So because the wow does not connect, you can choose to write it in either way. So this way right here, you can write it connected or not, and this way you can only write it non-connected. Okay, so you could if you want, you could write it this way, aw lad, and because the wow doesn't connect, you can also write it in the other way. And both are fine. Just remember that when you see this shape, it's la. Okay? So this right here, it can be written non-connected and it can be written connected. This one right here can only be written non-connected. Okay? Okay. I'm going to give you one that has two lam alifs in it, you're going to write the word awlad. Awlad. Go ahead and try to write the word. We just did that. Awlad. Al awlad. I'm going to put al in front of it. Al awlad. Go ahead. Al awlad. So instead of saying awlad means boys and it can mean children, so instead of saying children, I want to say the children. The children. Al awlad. Go ahead. Al awlad. Al awlad. Al awlad. Okay, so we have alif, lam, and now we have the word awlad, which starts with an alif hamza. And that alif hamza has to connect the way an alif connects. So if I have a lam here and it's followed by an alif, how is it going to be written? Hmm. So it's like this. We're going to put the alif inside of it like this. Al, o, lad. The other way that you could write it is like this. Right? So you have multiple ways of doing it. So if you see this, it means it's alif lam plus an alif hamza. Okay, okay you're going to write the word al ukht the sister. al ukht al ukht al ukht the sister. Alif Lam, 
And then you can write it this way, which most people tend to write it this way because it looks better. al the sister. So if I had the brother, al Okay? That way is probably easier to do it. So now we have done the letter lam, and we have covered alif lam, the definite article al, and we've covered lam alif, which is negation, right? And then also how do we write lam alif just in general in terms of spelling. So now one of the things that you can do, aside from the dictation drills that you're gonna have for homework, is you can look at page 161, and you wanna practice drill nine, and drill nine is recognizing the words. So you have pairs of words. So let's do, um, we'll do the first two. So let me just clear this page. Let's look at number one. Okay. So here are the words that we have. Sorry if there's any background noise. He's out there just talking loudly on a Zoom call. Okay. So here we go. You have four words. Similar spelling-ish, right? So we're trying to tell the difference between all of these. So I'll call this wahid, ifnain, thalatha, agba. I'm going to say a word, you just point to which one I'm saying. So if I say qalab, 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 this one right here, because it's a heavy q sound, and I'm pronouncing a fatha on both first two letters, qalab. How is that different than this word right here? In this one, I'm putting a sukun on the lam in the middle of the word, so that one's Qalb, right? So we're stopping on both of them. Whereas in number three, thalatha, we're saying qalab. Now, how would we be pronouncing number four, arba? Same as number one, but it's a light K sound. Kalb. Remember, that was the word for dog. Kalb. And number two, kilab, which would have been easy to recognize because it has the alif in it. Okay, let's look at another one. This one's going to be fun because everyone hates this one. Because the letters feel like they're so similar, but they're not. Okay. And some of your, the harakats might be missing in the book, so I'm putting them here. Okay, here we go, four words. That looks super similar, but they're not. I want you to actually pause the video, pronounce all four. Wahid, Ithmain, Thalatha, wa Arba. You're going to pronounce all four of them. Say all four of them and then unpause the video. Okay. okay. I'm going to say the word Aval. Aval. A. V. L. Notice where is my tongue? V. Aval. And notice, is it light or is it heavy? Aval. V. Which one has the letter? V. Right here. Now, some of you guys might have picked Arba, number four. If you picked Arba, most likely you speak a dialect. Okay, that's because this letter, many dialects pronounce that the same way as this letter, but it's actually incorrect. This letter is a heavy D sound. V. So number four, arba, we would pronounce it adal, adal, adal. So notice the difference. Thalatha is adal, arba, adal, adal, adal. Now what is number one? That is a light th sound. Adal, adal. And its name, that's a heavy T sound. Atal. Atal. So let's do all of them. Wahid. Adal. Ithnain. Atal. Thalatha. Adal. Arba. Adal. The. 
Okay. So I know this one is going to feel like it's a little bit difficult, but practice it. The other thing that you want to practice, I'm going to clear the screen again, is drill 10. And drill 10 is on the bottom of, bottom of page 161 to the top of page 162. And in this one, you're recognizing the sounds between these letters. And I'm going to write them all here because these are the new letters, a lot of the new letters that we've done that students often get confused with. Okay, So I'm going to go through each one and I'm going to pronounce it, Okay, starting on the right side. Val, the, val, the, 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 it's light, okay, so this is a light th sound like in three, okay, number two, sod, this is a heavy sound, sod, this is your heavy s sound, like the word saw, I saw him, but make that S sound heavier. Saw, saw, saw. Sides of your tongue pushing against your molars. Okay, number three. Dod, da, da. Heavy D sound. Remember the dot on top means it's a heavy sound. Heavy D sound. There's no English equivalent to it. La. That's why we call it lot language of lot because lot is from the Arabic language. You don't have it in English. Dod, da. Heavy D sound, and the way to differentiate it between some of the other letters is that the D sound that you're making with this L is your tongue pushing against the back of your teeth, okay? The back, back of your teeth and the roof of your mouth. Your tongue should not be sticking out of your teeth when you say this letter. L, 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 L. Notice you don't see my tongue. Okay, number four. T, heavy T sound. T. Ta, ta. This is the tongue behind the back of your teeth, but pushing upwards. Whereas la, you're sort of pushing towards the teeth, and ta, you're pushing more upwards. Okay, heavy T sound. Ta, ta, ta. Okay, the next one is the heavy uh, version of that. So here's the light version. The, make it a, and you get la. Va, va. And notice here, you should hear the tongue. You should see the tongue out of the teeth. So if these are my teeth, the tongue should come out. So if I say va, 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 notice how my tongue is sticking out. But when I say this one, la, la, my tongue is not sticking out. Okay? And then we have ein. Ein. It's rolling in our throats. And so many times people write it as an apostrophe, ah, okay, ain, ah, ru, i, depending on if it has a fatha, lama kasra. And rain, rain is the gargling g. R, 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 not to be confused with r, okay, r. So now these are all sort of the hard letters. So what I want to do is I'm going to actually make a chart for you that I would recommend that you do. I'm going to clear the frame. Let's see. I also want you to practice that drill, which I'll do a recording of. Okay. The chart that I'm going to do is light letters versus heavy letters. Okay. So light letters versus heavy letters. So let's start with... The letter val. Actually, I'll do it like this. The letter ta. Letter val. Letter sin. And the letter dal. And the letter ka. These are all light letters that have heavy counterparts. Ta, light T. Ta, heavy T. So, T, 
heavy T. The light TH, like the word the. Okay, and I think I messed up here. I told you guys the wrong thing. And no one corrected me because I'm on a video. So in the last slide, if you rewind actually, I'm gonna I'll probably add it in. That here is like other and the and the is like three. So my apologies, I misspoke. Okay, so that like the make it heavy, the the the. Okay, seen a light s sound sa versus sa heavy s. Okay, dal light d sound, bad heavy d. That's a rap name. Ba. Okay, kaf. Light K sound, cough, heavy, you could put a Q or if you want to put a K with a dot on top, whatever you want to do. Cough, cough. So here are the light letters and their corresponding heavy letters. So this will be a good exercise for you to be able to differentiate between the sounds. Okay. And the letter th, I'll just put here because it's not the same, but people tend to get it confused. This is like the word three. And it's a light th, there's no friction. It doesn't have a heavy version. It just happens to be a different type of th sound. Okay? So dal and va, those are the two that correspond with one another. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to practice reciting or saying those letters. The other thing that you also want to do in this chapter, and I'll uh, have a video of it, is drill 17. You want to now practice reading. And you've got sentences, full-blown sentences that you guys can now read and try to understand it for comprehension. And I'll have a video that will be posted on the reading for that. Okay?